So welcome to this uh, new interview at Sure Talk. Today we have Mr. Andrea Taglia from Italy. Funny fact, we are both from Italy and uh, you have been my very first uh, RF teacher long ago in, uh, in Modena, I think it was 2000. Uh, so Andrea, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, uh, I have been studying uh, this uh, subject uh, many years ago when in Italy there was not a support from institutions. So I went to study in Austria. Uh, well, actually, living in Austria and studying in Germany. Then I came back in the early 90s in Italy and I started to take care of most of the RF big jobs that were taking place in Italy, basically musicals. And then uh, I met uh, Mr. Bocelli in the mid-2000 uh, uh, and I started to work with him and consulting for some companies to, for developing specific products. And right now I'm sharing my time between uh, uh, kind of sound manager for Bocelli and taking care of some consultancy jobs around the world. So starting uh, with uh, with your experience uh, with Bocelli, you recently during this very difficult time for everyone, uh, you got the chance to to have a live event. Okay, no public, but uh, it was uh, a lot of people attended it. Uh, the numbers of uh, YouTube uh, live streaming were, I think, amazing. So do you want to tell us something about, uh, about your experience with Andrea Bocelli in Duomo for Easter 2020? Yeah, that was a pretty incredible event because it started uh, as, I don't want to say a small event, because when you go live uh, on Easter day on YouTube, it can be small considering even the period where everyone is locked down. So we did expect a kind of uh, a large uh, worldwide audience, but we would never have expected that in a few minutes we would jump to something like to 25 millions of contacts. That was really astonishing for us. And so we started to plan it as a live YouTube. Slowly, it came up that many other international broadcasters wanted to join and get the signal. And then uh, many other, let's say, online resources like iTunes or Spotify asked for a mix to get the files on their shops and so on. So the thing grew up in a crazy way. And we found ourselves that from starting from a very restricted uh, space where we wanted to meet just for uh, YouTube, we had to grow up to a mobile, a mobile van, a proper broadcast van, where we performed two different live mixes, one for YouTube, one for the rest of the broadcasters. The YouTube live streaming is reduced to 128 kilobytes per second, so you need to have a proper mix dedicated to that, different from a full HD signal for broadcasters. Uh, then uh, there was uh, uh, the, the fight with the acoustics of the church. It's a space that has about 9.6 seconds of RT60, so it's very, very cumbersome place uh, and empty. Uh, so we decided the best way was to put uh, a small mic into his ears that no one could see on uh, Streaming, but was there was a sure TL46 with an accent digital in quote diversity because we had another challenge. The challenge was to cover both the altar zone that is about 150 meters away from the front of the church where he ended the concert, and it would have worked out from the altar to the outside where there was a, a, a metal uh, door, so we couldn't share the same pair of antennas from inside and outside. So we had the quad diversity positioned about half of the church with two long antenna cables to reach the altar zone and two uh, long antenna cables to reach outside under the metal door and come out. And if you look uh, with some attention the YouTube uh, film, you can see that there are two little antennas on the side of a door that we are covering the outside. And so it was quite challenging and we had very little time to set up everything because there were lots of uh, celebration into the church. So we were allowed to work from, well, to load in, not to work, to load in at 9.30 on Saturday 
we had to dismantle everything by 7 p.m. because there was a evening uh, ceremony celebration, and then we could start only 1 p.m. on the next day on show day, uh, with the reels so starting around 3 o'clock to go live around 7. So it was really, really a tough setup, and we had to keep distance between the technicians. We had to wear masks. We could not stay, many of us, in the place. So it was really interesting job, let's say. But I'm happy if this brought some joy to the audience because in a in a period where there are no live shows, there was a kind of a very live show. <laughs> yeah, Com compat uh, like in a compatible way with the limitations. Uh, all of us uh, are nowadays uh, having time to to use and uh, out of your experience uh, how would you recommend to the young audio people uh, to use this time what are the fields that you see are more relevant in terms of innovation technology and uh, also what the future can uh, can be what can be more useful in the future as a skill uh, as you see the industry evolving into something that will be probably completely new I believe uh, there are some uh, fields that are common to the different branches of sound that is related to the interfacing uh, every hardware with the software. More and more every hardware is getting either software controlled or remotely controlled by a software. So I believe uh, right now uh, most of the audio people need to deepen their knowledge about uh, networks and the way to remote control systems. This can be down to a network of antennas with remote control, or could be down to a network of mixers with remote control, either Dante or AVB or similar protocols. But I think that right now, what everyone should depend on is the knowledge about networks in general, and then the specific application about the different technologies that I repeat can be many in our field. And then I believe that we should use this time to uh, understand each other, what are our black holes and deepen our specific knowledge about what we feel are less prepared about. So often it's a, a very specific application in a specific field, like if I'm a boom operator, I might want to understand what I can do with a wireless boom better than uh, in the past, if I'm working in the PA management, I want to deepen my knowledge about AVB, a distribution of network signals and uh, softwares to uh, measure some systems. I can deepen what is about RF, the evolution of uh, more um, distributed antenna configurations. There is a lot coming out with Quadversity, uh, with uh, combiners of antennas. There is a lot to do, and I would never forget uh, the time to listen uh, some good music uh, from a critical point of view. Now all the cities are very quiet. There is a noise floor that probably we will never experience again, or hopefully we will not. And we can listen to music. We can enjoy the nuances of a recording. We can uh, try to understand how the record was realized and try to improve the way we approach uh, with recording and the way we approach with reproducing uh, such a good sound into a live contest. And uh, how do you select your uh, your tools and uh, with a specific eye on uh, on microphones, obviously, um, to to achieve a goal, the ultimate goal that, in my opinion, uh, it looks to be. Uh, to have a natural sound, a sound that, especially with an artist like Andrea Bocelli, uh, that's the ultimate goal, uh, to, to have a te the technology that is as transparent as possible. So what, what are your tools and how you, you select them? And as well, how do you think the industry uh, is, uh, is helping in this direction and is evolving in, in this direction? Well, actually, I believe that there are two different fields uh, uh, talking about microphones. One field is the 
close proximity microphones, so uh, the ones that you use basically at the short distance from the instruments, and those needs to be as natural as possible, but as well as selective as possible to avoid the external noises. So it's a compromise between what you want to pick up, that is the essence of the acoustic instrument, and what you want to uh, avoid, that is overall uh, stage noise. Then the second uh, field is about the distance microphones, the one are, that are positioned about 80 centimeters to a meter uh, that are giving you the air of the instruments. Let's say that we try to keep uh, uh, the pickup of all the orchestra and choir as natural as possible and as uh, selective as possible because we have a first part of the show that is uh, quite much acoustic and classical with opera areas, while the second part is more kind of pop electric with uh, some uh, uh, sequences and a pop band uh, plugging in. Uh, so we have a, a full drum kit, electric bass, uh, keyboards with all their monitoring. So basically we need to join an acoustic orchestra classical playing the first half with a more pop show in the second so we need to preserve still the acoustics of the instruments but give them a, a little of push to match the level of drum bass keyboard and sometimes electric guitar so what we do normally we try to use for uh, uh, close proximity microphones that can be very selective in the meaning that we can mount them very close to the instrument but are not uh, a kind of a pickup sound. So going through many different brands and models, we came up to use the Shure TL uh, 46, the Twinplex, and we discovered that basically a double diaphragm at short distance is much less influenced by a single diaphragm from the reflections and so the different position of the microphone that can be always changed by the musician him himself. Imagine that they work on stage without microphones and they plug and position the microphones when they work uh, or when they sit down as well as they need to be able to remove them themselves when they work out at the intermission and go back and reposition them at the beginning of the show with any other microphone we always suffer the fact that the microphone was never in the same exact position mostly the relationship between the diaphragm and the instrument was not the same because even if they are omnidirectional because we do prefer to use omnidirectional because they capture the full extent of the instrument rather than a directional microphone that would change too much depending on the position. Anyway, even in uh, omnidirectional, when uh, you have a, a single diaphragm, you feel the difference between being close to a reflective surface or being on the opposite side. So with the double diaphragm, we solved that problem. For the distance microphones, uh, we are using mostly ships because uh, uh, we like the sweet sound of ships on the strings and uh, they have a very nice off-axis pickup that is going to give us uh, a lot of good sound coming up from other instruments around because when you position microphone about one meter away from strings it's obviously uh, coming in uh, the next row of musicians so you need a good off-axis pickup uh, they have uh, uh, a long, uh, a long time uh, using in uh, classical music, so they are not anymore so difficult to find as used to be uh, some ten years ago. Uh, so this is basically the two, the two different uh, choices on stage. Sounds great. Do you also have any suggestion or any experience with the with the other side of the industry, so manufacturers or big rental? Because I'm pretty sure some of them will be listening at this point. Well, uh, actually, uh, we are working with a lot of great and big rental companies from uh, uh, PRG in the US uh, rather than Brit Row in UK. Uh, and then uh, Twincam in Spain, uh, Agora in Italy. Obviously, uh, we are uh, we faced as well the Cleo Brothers for some events in the US. So we had a large number of rental companies who have been sharing with us uh, uh, their knowledge and uh, renting their equipment and uh, hiring uh, their crew for our shows. So that was an interesting part. I can see that there are 
every rental company is quite specific about the work, uh, the organization, uh, the testing procedure. Uh, I was amazing the first time I saw, for example, in Britro, they're testing uh, equipment for Las Vegas that they have engineering themselves so that every single Las Vegas that come back from a job is going to be tested truly in every single component through an audiomatic system and the motorized microphone placement. Uh, there are companies who are building in house all their racks wiring like Clear Brothers and sometimes selling out to cruise ship installation or fixed installation. So there is a, a big world outside that is working to make this job a kind of uh, standard from an industrialization point of view. I believe that as an end user, I could suggest uh, uh, all these companies to pay attention to the quality of their uh, crew because who is solving the problems and there is no way to avoid problems just because a stage end can drop a loud speaker during the load in or the load out or can pull and break a cable and so on you need to have a really good crew that is a customer to work long hours uh, properly uh, prepared and friendly at the end because what made the difference is as well the relationship so uh, it's not all about the equipment but is about having a good crew on the road and being able to interact with them uh, for a final uh, focus that is always the artist and the performance because the audience is going to pay uh, for a live show if he's going to get something more than not uh, uh, a youtube stream and after this long time of lockdown Coming back to a live audience with so much happening on the web will mean to give that extra bit of experience that everyone is expecting from a live sound uh, event. I think we both agree that we can't see the time of this thing to finish and, uh, and go back on the field somehow. It was a great experience to interview you. I'm really thankful for, for the time you spent with me. So thank you very much. And I wish uh, we can meet really, really soon somewhere. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea, as well. Have a nice day. Thanks.